Hi everybody and welcome back. So today we're going to be looking at the Vaporesso Nano Kit with the new GTX tank. This is a 22 millimeter tank that they've come up with and it does take all the GTX coils but it does come with two. Then you've got the mini little, look at the difference, mini little nano uh, mod. This is the Vaporesso Gen. Um, so it's just in smaller form. But yeah, so we're going to be taking a look at that. It does come with a 2000 milliamp hour internal battery and all the same settings as the original Vaporesso Gen. So let's go down and take a look at the Vaporesso Gen Nano. Okay, so here we are with the Vaporesso Gen Nano. Um, this is very, very similar to the original Vaporesso Gen. It's just smaller. So this is the box that it comes in. Mine is a sample packaging, so I don't know if they'll be changing that. It's got some information here regarding their mesh coils, their pulse mode, things like that. On the back, you're going to get some kit content as well as specifications. And then inside the box, you're going to get your Vaporesso Gen Nano kit. You're going to get the Nano Tank. You're going to get the Nano Mod. And then underneath, you're going to get a spare coil. And then underneath that, you're going to get a USB charging cable. This is a 2 amp charging cable. You're going to get your laser anti-counterfeit label instructions. And then you're going to get your user manual. The user manual is really, really more of a pamphlet style. And it does have like the information on it as to what you're supposed to be getting with it and what comes in um, inside. If you notice, there was an extra spot here. I think, I'm not sure that the retail version would have a spare bubble glass. Um, if it doesn't, well, I suggest that it should. <laughs> but let's go ahead and go over this. So we do have the tank. We've got the mod, which is identical to the original, except for smaller. And then you've got an extra coil. All right, so let's go ahead and go over the tank. Now, this is their new GTX tank. This is a 22 millimeter in diameter tank. It does say GTX tank here. Mine does say sample. And then, of course, you've got your serial number. You do have your fixed 510. On the top, it does come with a 510 drip tip. So it is a standard of 510. It does say Vaporesso here. The tank actually matches the device that you get. It does have knurling on the top for you to unscrew it to fill it. Now, this is different than other tanks lately. The other tanks usually have a fill port. This is actually anywhere around the coil is your fill port. So anywhere around it, but not down the middle would be to fill it up. This does hold 3.5 mils of e-liquid. And on the bottom, it does have that famous tri type of airflow. I call it tri airflow. It has three slits opposed to just two, which gives it more of a rounded flavor and more of a rounded airflow in my opinion. So whatever you do to one side will happen to all three sides. To get into your coil, all you need to do is just unscrew the base like this, and this is going to be the base. And then all you have to do is pull out your coil. So this does have that push in, uh, push in type of coil like many of them do now. So this is the GTX coil. This is actually the 0.2 ohm resistance coil rated between 45 to 60 watts. And you can see that mesh in there. The second coil that they give you is actually gonna be this one. This is the GTX 0.6 ohm resistance coil. And this one is rated between 20 to 30 watts. So this is more gonna be for more of a restrictive vape. And this is gonna be more of a direct lung vape. So I'm going to go ahead and prime up the coil that I recommend doing um, whenever you have a new coil. And that's just to get it saturated and ready for you to vape because you do want to go ahead and pre-saturate it or prime it up and then let it sit for at least five minutes so it'll saturate all the way. So I'm just going to put a little bit in here and I'm also going to put some on the cotton on the outside to help it prime up faster or wick up faster. And not everybody does that. You don't have to do this. You can just put it in and wait five to 10 minutes and you should be fine. But all you have to do is literally just push your coil in like that and it's in and then screw on your base. No issues with that. I love that it doesn't have threading so you don't have to worry about if the coil is threaded in right because usually with coiled, um, Threaded coils, sometimes if you don't have it just exactly right, you can have leaking. With push-in coils like this, you don't have to worry about that. Then all you have to do is just go ahead and open up the top. Again, it does hold 3.5 mils of e-liquid. And then you just fill it up. There we go. Put your top on. And again, you want to let that sit for at least five minutes. 
Okay, so now let's go over the Vaporesso Gen Nano. This right here is really, really small. I actually have my original right here, so you can actually see the differences. This is the original and this is the new Nano, so it is much smaller. And this is what it looks like on the front, and then this is what it looks like on the side. Both of them do have the battery ventilation on the bottom but you don't have to worry about changing out your batteries in here. This does come with a 2000 milliamp hour internal battery, so you don't have to change out your batteries. It does have your USB port right here for charging. Again, it does have the battery ventilation, and this is the Gen Nano, and it does have the same Axon chip that is in the original. So you still have that quick firing, that super play mode, and things like that. On the top, you do have a spring-loaded 510, and it does fit a 22 millimeter because it's kind of nano. <laughs> on this side, you see Vaporesso, and then on this side, it's got the V4, the Vaporesso logo. Now, this does have that same type of rubbery feel to it, so it's non-slip, and it's a good grip, um, which I really appreciate. On this side, you have nothing, and then on this side, you do have your menu. To turn it on, it's five clicks, one, two, three, four, five, and it turns on Vaporesso. And then here we go. Now we're into the menu. Now, as you can see on the menu, it does have your battery percentage. It's gonna have your resistance. It's gonna have your puff counter. It's also gonna have your wattage here, what mode you're in. And this one right now I'm in pulse mode. And then it's gonna give you automatically your um, wattage range based off of the type of coil that you have. So if you have the 0.2 ohm resistance coil, it's gonna show 45 to 60. If you have the 0.6 ohm resistance coil, it's gonna show 20 to 30 watts. So that I think is absolutely great because of the fact that it's gonna give you those best ranges. You don't have to guess, you don't have to try to see it on the coil. It's gonna have it there for you. As you're down, it has your up and then it has a mode button. Now. Um, with the mode button, all you have to do is press and hold it. Once you do, it actually goes into your menu. Your pulse mode, this is right here means that as you're vaping, it's actually pulsing at that wattage to give you a more thorough vape, in my opinion. I absolutely love that mode. Um, the next one is Power Eco. Power Eco, that is actually to give you longer battery life. So it's sort of like in your car, how you can put it on Eco if you have that option. Very similar effect with the Power Eco. The next one is gonna be Smart TC, and we'll go ahead and press the mode button to go into that. So this will tell you what temperature you're in. It's also gonna tell you what setting you're in. Now, if you press and hold your um, mode button again, it'll pass through that to the next one, which is your DIY mode. If we want to select that, we go in here. This is actually for your variable wattage, your variable temperature, your variable voltage, and your custom curve in wattage. Variable wattage, if you press your mode button, it's going to be variable wattage soft, variable wattage normal, and variable wattage hard. So depending on which one you choose is the type of vape strength you're going to have. So if you have it on soft, it's going to give you a softer pull. Um, if you have it on normal, which is the way that I like it, you're just getting the norm. And then if you want it on hard, it's actually going to give you more of a boost. So these are just like boosts, mini boosts. Um, and then, of course, if you go over to exit and press the button, it'll exit out back to the DIY mode. Now, in variable temperature, this right here is where you can actually choose your materials that you want to use in temperature control. So you've got stainless steel, nickel, titanium, and then you've got your memory settings. And you also have your resistance. Now in the resistance setting, this is actually gonna tell you if you wanna lock your resistance or unlock it. If you leave it unlocked, it's gonna definitely just determine your, your resistance automatically. If you lock it, you're locking in that resistance. So I personally leave it unlocked. So it's just gonna be unlocked in that resistance. I don't currently have anything on here right now. The IY mode, if you go into variable voltage, this is basically gonna make it just a voltage mod. I don't suggest this for any type of beginners. I don't even suggest temperature control. I really suggest just staying under wattage for any beginners. But if you are familiar with variable voltage and you wanna use that setting, you have it right there to use. So back to DIY mode. The next one is gonna be your custom curve wattage. Now Vaporesso actually made me fall in love with custom curve wattage for the first time. What it does is it'll give you certain boosts depending on what ranges you actually put in here. So right now it's at 60 watts and that's gonna give you the full 60 watts and then it's gonna dwindle down. Now if you press your down, this is actually gonna change that right there. So you, I'm setting it at 54 watts. I'm gonna press my um, fire button to select the next one. 
I can go up to 60 if I want to, press the fire button, go over to the next one, I can drop it down if I want to, go to the next one and so on. So you can just go ahead and set those and that's gonna be your custom curve. Now, once you're done, then you press your mode button and you can go into okay and it's gonna show you exactly what you've changed here. And this is gonna be your main menu showing you the custom curve rather than the wattage. Now going back into DIY mode, your next one is gonna be BP. This is bypass mode. This literally turns it into like a mechanical mod. So I don't suggest this one for newbies at all ever. Now super player mode, what that does is it actually makes the device go at lower. Um, you can go as low as a 0 0.05 resistance rather than the 0 0.10. So you can actually go at lower resistance based off of the super player mode for like RDAs and things like that. The next one is going to be your exit to take you back to the menu. Your next one is going to be system set. Now in system set, this is where you can actually change your smart variable wattage function. If you go ahead and select that, what that is, is that's going to automatically detect your wattage automatically. So you can have it on or you can have it off. I like mine and on. The next one is going to be auto eco. If you want that in that setting, you don't have to switch it to auto to eco. You can actually have it in that and that'll actually save your battery. Puff, this is where you can actually change your puff counter. You can reset it um, just by pressing the button here and select, it'll change it. So you can go ahead and reset that if you want. And then the next one is gonna be your brightness and then just press okay. The next one is gonna be your flip screen. Now, the great thing about flip screen is if you go ahead and select this and it flips the screen, so I wanna flip the screen, choose yes, and now everything is on this side. The great thing about it is that, remember this was down and this was up before. Now that you flipped it, this is now down and that is up. So this'll go up and this'll go down. So not only does a screen rotate, but also the buttons will rotate for you too. Okay, and then the next setting is gonna be default. If you wanna set your de your device to default, you would choose yes, I'm gonna keep it at no. And then the next one is actually gonna be the version of your firmware. And after that, it's just gonna be exit to get you back to the main menu. So that is pretty much it. Okay, so now as you can see, I do have the tank on. So now it's gonna change the resistance is showing a 0.19 to read off of the resistance of the coil, as well as your um, best at 45 to 60. That does go up to a full 80 watts. It's not recommended for this coil, but you can use this for maybe a different um, Addy. And it does go up to a full 80 watts and it does go as low as five watts. Now, if you go slowly pressing the up or the down button slowly, it goes in 0.5 increments, but if you press and hold it, it'll go a lot faster and it'll go by one watt increments. Now, if you wanna lock the device, it's three clicks, one, two, three, it's gonna put a little lock right there. On the lock, you can still fire it, but you will not be able to change any of your settings, which is the way I personally like it. If I want it to not change anything, I turn it off, but that is just personal preference. So one, two, three, it'll take the lock right off of that. So yeah, so that's pretty much it. That is the Vapor Resso Nano Kit um, with the new GTX 22 millimeter tank on it. So let's go up. We're gonna talk on it, vape on it, pros and cons. Okay, so here we are back on top with the Vaporesso Gen Nano with the new GTX 22 millimeter tank. So I'm gonna go over the tank first and then we'll go over the device. So for the tank, I think that it's really cool that they made a 22 millimeter tank to go on this little nano kit. I think that as it is, it's very, very small. It's gonna be very compact. If that's what you like, a small different type of setup, then this might be something that you like. The original Vaporesso Gen was a hit and the menu, the way that it worked and everything else was a hit along with the tank. Now this tank is no joke. It gives superb flavor. These GTX coils do not play. Very, very, very good coils. Vaporesso basically has never disappointed me on their coils. The flavor is always there. The wattage range is always there. Um, they give you so much to that. In addition to that, they always have this three-way airflow or tri-airflow that I like to call it. So what that does is it actually gives it air all over the place, in my opinion. Instead of you having just the two airflows, it actually gives you the three, which I think is amazing. Now, the top fill is... It's not hard, it's not, I just, I'm so used to having the top fill, um, the top fill holes 
rather than having the whole thing. But as long as you're careful with it, you won't have a problem. I just feel that it would be better with the actual top fill holes only because that way if you tip it over, you're not losing all your e-liquid if you're filling it up. That to me is like a safety precaution for those type of top, top fill methods. So I'm not really a fan of the top fill, but it works and it works very, very well. I don't have any issues with it. You just don't wanna go into the coil. You just wanna go in the areas around it. 510 drip tip, they're compatible with any 510 drip tips. The only thing is, is that nowadays we're getting into the bigger drip tips. Now for a kit like this and this size, I don't mind it. I really think that a 510 is very, very good for this size of a device. It doesn't bother me, but when you get into bigger tanks, I definitely think that we should be getting more into the A10 compatible rather than the 510 compatible. But again, on a small kit like this, it works absolutely beautifully and having it too big, might be just a little bit too big, you know what I mean? <laughs> so flavor, 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 flavor is definitely key on any of the Vaporesso GTX coils. This is no joke. I have the 0.2 ohm resistance coil in. So before anything else, <laughs> let's go ahead and have a vape. That is at 51 watts. That's what I have it currently at. And it's giving great flavor and it's giving vape and great vapor production. I'm gonna go ahead and boost that up for you. So we'll go up to the maximum of 60 watts. So here we are with the 60 watts and let's go ahead and have a vape. Even more airier and even more of a warm vape. It's not a hot vape by any means, but it is a little bit warmer than having it anywhere lower. This one here is a nano and that's what it's meant to be. So I don't wanna confuse it with a regular full size kit um, in that aspect. I wanna, I wanna review it for what it is and it's a nano kit. It's a smaller kit, more compact and the tank is no joke. Now 3.5 mils of e-liquid is a good capacity for a small device like this. For anything bigger, I would say no, but for a small device like this, it's okay. Also being that the wattage ranges, the max is 60 for the 0.2 and the max is uh, 30 for the 0.6 ohm resistance coils. I don't think you need um, too much, um, a higher wattage only because you're only getting 3.5 mils of e-liquid capacity. With the higher ranged coils, you would need more wattage, which would drain your battery a little bit faster. That takes me into the device. The device does have a 2000 milliamp hour internal battery, two amp charging, which I think is phenomenal. Does it have type C? No, but not everybody has a type C charger just laying around. A lot of people do have the regular, you know, USB type chargers. So I'm not gonna give it a con for that because I think that you can find those around your house a lot quicker than you can a type C. So it keeps it in sync with a lot of other your devices. Two amp charging is faster anyway. So you're getting a good two amp charging. It's gonna, it's gonna charge a lot faster. So I, I can't knock it for that. And it's a device that's this small. It doesn't, doesn't do anything. It's, it's there. It's really, really good. The menu options, exactly like the original gen. So I think that that's great that they give you all those options. I don't feel that in this device you actually need all those options. In the bigger one, I would say yes. In something, a nano kit like this, I don't really see the need, but if you do have a need, it has it in here. You can use the custom curves, you can use the Eco, which I think is really great, especially to reduce the, to enhance the longevity of your battery, um, just like on a car or things like that that come with Eco settings. It does the same exact thing. You've got temperature control if you like vaping and temperature control. None of these coils that I'm aware of because I didn't get any material information are compatible for um, temperature control. So I wouldn't recommend trying it with these coils, but if you have another atomizer that does, then you can use this in temperature control. For me, I just use it in wattage mode. Sometimes like on the bigger ones, I'll use it in the custom curve settings, but that's something that I like to do and play around with. So that's how that works. But for this in just regular wattage setting, it's absolutely phenomenal. The flavor, I cannot tell you how great a flavor it is. The flavor is crazy, crazy good. I love the flavor on this and it's got massive airflow. So if you wanna cut down the airflow, which I probably would suggest if you're vaping it at 60 watts because it's so airy, then this is what you get. Still a lot of cloudage, still a lot of flavor and it's cut down, but you can't even tell because well, it's a vaporesso coil. <laughs> So yeah, so that's pretty much
much it for my review. There's only a couple cons. Like I said, the top fill, I'm not a fan of. Another con for me is not having an extra bubble glass. I don't know if it's because this was the sample pack that package that it didn't come with an extra bubble glass. I see the cutout for one, so I'm hoping for the retail packages they do have the extra bubble glass. But for my package, it did not, which I have to list that as a con. Um, other than that, there's really no con at all to the device. I love Vaporesso devices. It's got that Axon chip, which is quick firing. As soon as you press the button, it's firing. Never had an issue with that. Um, menu system works absolutely amazingly. And I like the fact that you can lock it without um, locking the fire button. So that to me is another huge pro. So that's pretty much it for the Vaporesso Gen Nano with the new G GTX 22 millimeter tank. 2000 milliamp hour battery, nothing to sneeze at. I think that's a great amount. It does come in a number of colors. I'm gonna leave those colors right up here. I think that the color ranges are just phenomenal. I do like the fact that they offer you a variety of colors in this, but I do love that ombre effect with this kind of rubbery feel. It's not rubber, but it feels like a rubbery feel, which is nice and grippy so that you don't feel like you're gonna drop it. And I think I said that in my original um, Vaporesso Gen review as well. I think it just works absolutely phenomenal. So yeah, so that's pretty much it for my review. Let me know down in the comments, do you have the original? What did you think about it? And would you be interested in something this nano? <laughs> so I'll see you in the next review.